The CAD Geek, empowering CAD professionals. Hello everyone, this is Donnie Gladfelter from The CAD Geek, and today I have the privilege of attending the AutoCAD 2011 product launch event live from the Autodesk Gallery at One Market in San Francisco, California. So one of the neatest new features being added to AutoCAD 2011 is undoubtedly the 3D surface modeling capabilities, so I figured we'd take a quick look at it today. So with AutoCAD 2011 open, I'm going to go ahead and close the welcome screen. So we're going to be creating a 3D drawing. I'm going to create a brand new drawing using the ACAD3D.dwt. So with this coming up, I'm going to go ahead and insert a drawing of a 2D key fob that you might use to lock and unlock your car. So if we take a look at this drawing, you can see I've just got a simple top view and a side view. And we're going to use this as the foundation for our 3D surface model that we're going to create using AutoCAD. So the first thing I need to do is switch to a 3D workspace. And you'll notice I have a workspace switcher in the upper left hand corner here on the quick access toolbar in addition to the one down here on the status bar. And I now have two 3D workspaces, a 3D basics and a 3D modeling. Basics, again, kind of basic 3D tools, modeling uh, for more advanced modeling features. That's the one we're gonna choose for today. Now I'm not too interested in the material browser, so I'll go ahead and close it. But what we're gonna be working on today is of course surfaces, so I'll switch to the surface tab. So to begin my model, I'm going to use the sweep tool and I'm going to select an edge here on my side view and then select the perimeter edge in my top view. And just like that, AutoCAD creates a 3D surface for me. Now, as I'm modeling my surfaces, it's oftentimes helpful to be able to see these tessellation edges that again, I can see when I hover over it. Now, what I can do is switch over to my view tab. Now in the past, I've had to kind of choose between if I want to see it shaded or if I want to see the wireframe. AutoCAD 2011 introduces a new X-ray visual style, which is in many ways kind of a cross between the conceptual style and the wireframe style that we've had for some time now. So the next thing I need to do is kind of fill the area in the middle of my key fob here. And the way I'll do that is by switching back over to the surfaces tab, and I'm gonna use the patch tool. So using the patch tool, I'm just gonna select these outer edges right here that creates a closed region uh, for AutoCAD to go ahead and create a surface between. And just like that, you can see AutoCAD has now created a basic surface for me there. So this being a 3D, or sorry, being a plastic key fob, I need to create some sort of thickness to it. And the way I'm going to do that is with the offset command. Now this is a true offset command in the way that it'll create objects that are um, tangent and perpendicular and all that good stuff. Now when I use it, the arrows come up indicating the direction that the offset's going to happen. I'm going to flip this guy to make it go down. And the distance I'm going to use for today is a 32nd of an inch. So I'll select that outer edge again as well and flip that, make an offset of a 32nd of an inch. And just like that, I've got two surfaces kind of overlaid right on top of each other. So we'll kind of call it the outer and inner surface. So for this to really be considered a key fob, I need to be able to put a keychain through it, right? So what I need to do is be able to trim out a little hole right here. Now, if you've worked with previous versions of AutoCAD, you know that it can be a little tricky when I've got a bunch of AutoCAD objects stacked on top of one another, selecting the right object at the right time. So AutoCAD 2011 introduces a new drawing mode called Selection Cycling. We're gonna go ahead and use it with this trim command on the surface panel, or surface tab. When I select a surface, notice this little contextual menu that comes up and it selects all the objects that AutoCAD or lists all the objects that AutoCAD thinks I might be trying to select. So it makes selecting all those surfaces pretty quick and easy. Same thing applies for selecting the cutting edges themselves. So again, I'm just gonna select these arcs, again, through all of these objects using that contextual selection cycling um, tab or, or panel that comes up. So when I continue through the trim command, it gives me this outline. So if I just pick an area somewhere here in the middle, it will trim away those areas for me. And so just like that, I've cut a hole into my uh, kind of plastic key fob here where my keychain can go through. Now, ultimately, we're going to make this into a 3D solid, but before we can make it a 3D solid, it needs to create a watertight region. And currently, I've just got two surfaces kind of floating on top of one another. So the way we'll make a watertight region is by using the blend tool. And what I'm going to do is select my top surface first, and the order doesn't really matter, but just Make sure you select all the like edges of either the first or second surface. Whoops. So again, 
select the top surface here and select the second surface, which will be the bottom surface right there, just like that. So again, we're going to make this a nice flush cut. So we're going to do it to position G0. And we're going to repeat that kind of same process here for the front edge. Once again, selecting the G0 position to create that nice flush edge. So next we need to make a watertight region along the bottom of our key fob here. I think it might be a little easier if we change it to conceptual. So we'll change our visual style to conceptual and then move back again to our surface tab. We're going to use the blend tool once again, this time making sure that we select the outer surface first, like so. Again, if needed, you can always use that selection cycling drawing mode to make sure you pick the right edge. So with that, I'll select that edge and then I'm going to come through now and select the inner edge as my second surface. Oops, didn't want that guy. Select this one. Like so. So it's now blended between these. Again, since I want this to be a nice flush edge, I'm going to select these little down arrows and pick the position G0 option. So I now pretty much have a solid um, object, again, a watertight object that we can look at here again in my 3D or my X-ray visual style. So back on the surface tab, I'm going to use the sculpt command. And what this is going to do is take a series of surfaces and convert them into a solid, again, a watertight solid. So now if I select on this guy, let me just click the quick properties guy, you can see that it is indeed a 3D solid. So let's go ahead and create the bottom of my key fob here by mirroring the top that I just created. So I'm just going to use the mirror command, select the uh, key fob itself. I'll use ortho to mirror it like so. So again, if we switch back to the top view, switch to the side, you can see I now have go with the top and bottom to my key fob. Although the next thing I need to do is go ahead and cut some holes in this. And the way I'll do that, I'm going to first start by copying my button outlines because I'm going to need them for both cutting through my key fob and also to create the buttons themselves. So again, using selection cycling, I'm able to quickly and easily select these guys. Let's kind of copy these guys out, maybe two units to the side. And now that I'm dealing with solids, I'll go to the solid tab and we're going to go ahead and extrude these button outlines to cut through the upper uh, portion of my plastic key fob here. Just like that. And I'll select the last one right here. And again, I don't care what the distance is, just so long as they cut through the top of it right there. So again, if I take a look at this guy, I can now use the Boolean commands to subtract from the top solid right now. So I'll select that guy, cycle through the command, and now I will select the objects that I want to take away from that, which again are these button outlines. And so by doing that, you can see I just now cut through the top of my uh, key fob there, allowing for these buttons over here. So let's go ahead and create our buttons. We'll use our outlines that we copied right over here. Make these a 16th of an inch thick. And let's go ahead and fill at the edges. We're gonna do a radius of a 32nd of an inch. And we're gonna use the chain command to make sure we get a nice constant radius around both of these outlines. It's just like that. And then I can continue on with these two guys right here. So there's are my buttons. So I can just kind of take these guys, select them. I'll move them back over two units. And just like that, you can see I now have a 3D key fob that I created using 3D surfaces inside of the new AutoCAD 2011. So there you have it. This is Donna Gladfelter from the CAD Geek. Stay tuned for many more tips and tricks just like this on the new AutoCAD 2011.